We're back with Stan Chesley. It's a pleasure for us to discuss all of these things relative to Israel and the JNF, and less pleasurable to talk about the problems. Tell us a little bit more about the positives of the state of Israel. My best positive is that we're in the middle of uh, huge economic problems in the United States. Uh, they're talking about a divided Jerusalem. So I'm the new president of Jewish National Fund, and I go down the street to near the Citadel, and they're selling condominiums. I'm not really in the mood to buy a condominium, and this is in the middle of the economic crisis. A man looks at me and says, you can buy, they do it in meters, but I said, I need to know square feet. You can buy a 1,600 foot apartment, okay? With no walls, no ceiling, you gotta build it in and bring an architect. And if you buy it today, it's a million nine hundred thousand dollars. And we'd rather have shekels than dollars because the price will change all the time going up. And I have all these people say, be careful. My God, are, is it dangerous? I said, well, I don't know about the danger, except I'm in a traffic jam between Tel Aviv and Jerusalem, and I don't know how I'm going to get there. We have more killings going on in the streets in New York City, Cincinnati, and Detroit with our own drug wars. Don't talk about the Mexican drug wars. Talk about the terror in Chicago with the young people and drugs and felons with drugs. My wife's a federal judge and this is what she sees every day. A lot of the problems, and that's why I'm happy to be on your show and happy to have a show like this. A lot of these problems are brought forth by the media wanting only the negative and not the positive. I cannot get the media. The media would love to see a clash between Israeli soldiers and Palestinians in the streets somewhere rather than seeing the kids, the Palestinian kids that are getting fed and educated in the schools in Israel. Well, that's part of the real serious problem I see that Israel and the world is subjected to. There is a tendency by so much in the media to lie by omission, dwell on negatives and show half-truths. Our program, The Shalom Show, tries to show the achievements right. of the state of Israel. The other thing is, but, yes. we, are, we are absolute victims of the soundbite and the pundits. I remember when I was a kid, you'd see John Cameron Swayze and Cronkite. You trusted them. It was a 15-minute show about the news. It was about the news, not about their own opinions. And now what you see is talking heads, and it's fine, except it's not the truth. I've been asked to be a talking head on some sports law and other things. I knew nothing about it, but I was still a talking head. And then I got a call that I was an expert in a certain field. And it's absurdity, and that's what we are. We are victims of the soundbite, and they only want to see the bad and not the good. I met tonight, this afternoon, with 30 kids, Alan and I, seniors in high school, here, today. Took off Sunday, they weren't watching football so that they can learn more about Israel. Israel, thank God, is able to defend itself in the battlefield. And Israel has so many achievements from, in technology, medicine, agriculture, and so forth. I don't have to lecture you on that. And the, you and the audience, most of the audience knows all about this. But there is an area that seems to be omitted, and that is what I call the media war. There is a media war in which worldwide Israel is mis misrepresented, anti-Semitism has been converted to anti-Zionism, a euphemism for anti-Semitism. And I'd like to ask you for your opinion with regards to the uh, media war and how serious it is in its potential impact on the minds, the goodwill people should have for Israel and how they're being twisted against Israel. It's an excellent point. I am very troubled by it. I am so troubled by it because what we learn is what we see on TV, and that becomes the indelible issue. I watched, and let me use Stay Road as an example, I watched and learned about 8,000 rockets over seven years into a peace-loving city, community. You never read or heard anything about it. The only thing you heard about it when finally Israel said is enough is enough and they went into Gaza, and my God, they had an international, an international, investigation of the activity of Israel when they went into Gaza, the Goldstone. Where was there an investigation by the UN as to seven years of lobbying of missiles? The reality is it's not fair. Is it going to be fair? No. And I've come to the conclusion, this is Chesley, lemonades out of lemons, if Israel wasn't strong and able to handle themselves, for example, 
Israel may be Saudi Arabia's best ally when it comes to Iran. There is no question in my mind that Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, Arab Emirates are more frightened of Iran than Israel is. Israel is prepared to deal with it. I don't believe Saudi Arabia, no matter how many airplanes they buy, or Kuwait, or Qatar, or Dubai, they build a lot of hotels, I don't think any of them are equipped to deal with Iran. Stan, this is most interesting. I really would like us to continue, but we have to do some more another day on another show and discuss history Fine. and issues in America. I must steer us back to Israel and our interest. In and I apologize for getting off the subject. It's not, not a problem at all. The achievements of the state of Israel, all that Israel has done in 62 years, phenomenal. The list of achievements technologically and so forth, as compared to those of other countries, the number of scientific papers produced in Israel as compared to other countries, rather amazing. Before we end, what are your thoughts with regard to the pride you have for Israel's achievements? The pride makes me a young person. The pride of being the president of the uh, Jewish National Fund makes me so proud I can burst all of my buttons when I see and when I go, and I see the viability of the people. I'm not interested in how many stones there are in Caesarea, or how old the, it is, or where the battlefields were in Golan Heights. I'm interested in the people and Israel now, Israel today. It's, it's phenomenal. I remember criticism, oh my, these poor kids come out of high school and they go in the army. Now I'm watching all the kids in the United States instead of jumping into graduate school, going off and doing good works, and my niece is in East Timor with the UN instead of going to graduate school. So we learn, we are learning every day from Israel. The United States is learning from Israel. Interesting point. Sir, I want to thank you very, very much thank for being you. with us today. I'm honored to be here and thank you for just letting me do a little free thinking and three, free talk. Our pleasure, thank, thank you, you, sir. I'd like to have you on the Shalom Show again at your convenience. Call me. Thank you, sir. I'm shy. <laughs> I can see that. I'll be right back. This brings us to the end of our special show for today with Stanley Chesley. I'm Richard Peretz. Thank you for being with us. Mm -hmm.